Uh, and tomorrow night is going to be our evening of prayer. Everyone is invited to that. Feel free to come. The more the merrier on that. Um, that'll be all the announcements for this evening. In this evening's worship service, uh, Brother Joe Mormon will close us in our prayer. Uh, and, and before we get started, uh, Brother Joel Foster will, will lead us in our open prayer. Now with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this time to come together and to sing songs of praises to you, study a lesson from your word. <coughs> Father, we pray that the things that we do this evening will be in accordance to your word and that you will be glorified from our worship. We pray that each one that is here this evening will be uplifted from the songs that we sing, the lesson that is presented. We pray that you be with Brother Dennis as he presents our message to us this evening, that you will give him a clear recollection of his preparation, that he can present it in a way that we can understand, as he always does. And we pray that you will be with each of us, that we can open our hearts take these things in and apply them to our lives. Father, there are those that Brother John has mentioned that are sick, especially ask your comfort upon Denise's family in their time of bereavement. And we pray that you'd be with those that are sick that we know of and those that we don't know of. You know, Father, we pray that if it is your will that you will provide a healing, be with those that wait upon them, care for them, that they will do those things that are most needful and necessary towards their healing. Father, so many things are going on in our country and in our world today that are contrary to your word, and we pray that you would <coughs> defeat those that are doing things that are contrary to your will and your word, and that we could live in a little better harmony than we do in the world. But we know that the world hates those that strive to live in a good way, Father. They hated your son, and they hate those that do things that they don't like. So we pray that you would help each of us to live and to bear up during these trying times. And Father, if there be laws and things that are passed that are contrary to your word, that if we were to obey those things, that we would endanger our souls, Father, we ask that you would strengthen us so that we can do as Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than men and stand for your word. We pray now that you be with us in this service, be with our first responders, our military, uh, care for them, protect them as only you can. In all things, Father, your will be done, for we ask the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Good evening. 9 8 4. Nine, eight, four. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of land and the sea. You are Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all lords you will be. We bow down, and we worship you, Lord. We bow down, and we worship you, Lord. We bow down, and we worship you, Lord. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. You are king of creation and king of my life, king of the land and the sea. You were king of the heavens before there was time, 
and King of all kings you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord, we bow down and we crown you the king, we bow down and we crown you the king, King of all kings you will be. One, five, seven. One, five, seven. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth, o'er and round, around us lies, Lord of all, to Thee we raise. Our sacrifice of praise for the beauty of each hour of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and star. Of light, Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice and praise for the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends of. Shall meet on that beautiful 
One who thinks without acting is like a hunter who aims his gun, but never fires it. The one who acts without thinking is like the hunter who fires his gun without aiming it. Both of these, thinking and acting, we find in the book of Philippians chapter 4, in verses 8 and 9. Paul begins... The segment with the word finally. And if you were reading the beginning of the chapter, Paul is concluding his discourse in this matter of being able to encourage and edify and build us up, but also in how we are to conduct ourselves. To think like a Christian we must be thinking on the correct traits. And Paul begins these traits with the word true, something that is genuine or real. Then he goes on with the word honorable, which we could also use the word noble, the things that are lofty, majestic things, things that can lift our mind from the cheap and the crude to those things that are noble and good and of moral worth. The word just refers to doing what is right, whether it is to God himself or to our fellow man. The word pure also comes from the root word that we find holy. Morally undefined. And then the word lovely means toward love. The response that we get when we act and think the way we should. Paul ends these traits with the word commendable. Some Translations may have the word gracious, being well spoken of. These lists of qualities that Paul describes here is followed by two conditional phrases. If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. I guess we could say that Paul is trying to get across the thought of if there's anything excellent, if there is, and there is, if there's anything that is worthy of praise, and there always is, then we should respond in a certain way. So what is the proper way to respond? The first is right thinking. 
Paul says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. We are to think carefully. We are to make the affirmation, aforementioned traits the subject of our thoughtful consideration. This morning our lesson was on focus. And these are the things that we need to focus on. These words, true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, and commendable. What is important is not so much the definition of these words, but the general impression that's left by the combination of these words. Now think about these things. In our conversations with people, what do we try to convey? Things that are good and uplifting in contrast to those that are dirty and degrading. Paul's admonition, if we want to look at it in the negative side, would probably read something like, don't let your mind dwell on things that are false, dishonorable, immoral, and so on and so on. Now, in a conversation I had with someone a few weeks ago, they were trying to con convey the thought that God is not interested in words, that it doesn't matter what we speak, how we speak, the words that come out of our mouth isn't of a consequence, but I say it is. The language that we hear so often today in society is not a conversation or language that God likes to hear. Let our speech be seasoned with salt is one of the <clears throat> verses that come to mind. The mind naturally dwells on something. So Paul is telling us to fix our thoughts on good things, not the bad things. We need to stay positive and not negative. We need to do those things which build up instead of tear down. There were two discoveries that was made in modern psychology. And there's a lot of people that probably don't believe this. One is that our lives are governed by our thoughts. And the second one is that we can control our thoughts. With that being said, we do have the power within us, in a sense, to control our lives. Solomon in Proverbs 23 and verse 7, Solomon wrote, for he is like one who is inwardly calculating. Eat, drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Paul is reminding us in Philippians 4 to think on these things. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, A man is what he thinks about all day long. The soul is dyed by the color of his thinking. Some will probably say, I can't control my thoughts. From time to time, bad thoughts slip through my mind. And there's nothing I can do about it. There's an old saying. It says you can't keep birds from flying overhead, but you surely can keep them from building a nest in your hair. Every one of us had thoughts that we shouldn't have. But the question is, not will we have them, but will we dwell on them? When these thoughts come into our hearts and our minds, Paul is telling us to think on the things that are true and honest and just 
and pure. The more we focus on those thoughts, the easier it will be to control our thoughts. In Philippians 4 and verse 9, Paul says, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Why do you think Paul wants us to concentrate our thoughts to edifying things? Does he just want us to work on these things as a mental exercise? See, I think Paul is a lot wiser than we possibly think we are. Because Paul knows that those thoughts will shape our actions. It's not adequate to think like Christians and not act like Christians. And in acting like Christians, we need the right teaching. In Acts chapter 20, verse 20, Paul told the brethren here, the folks here, that they heard Paul teach and preach. And he says in this verse, how did I not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house? Then he goes on in verse 27, and he further says, For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Paul reinforced this in Timothy, in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 2. When he told Timothy to preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. <coughs> you see, these folks had heard and learned God's word from Paul. They weren't fortunate like we are and are able to open up the Bible and see these words. And as Paul taught them, Paul left it up to them to be able to comprehend what he taught and to remember it. And it's no different for us. In John 6, verse 45, Jesus taught, it is written in the prophets, that they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. The Philippians saw the example of Paul. They followed his example. And that's a good thing to do, to be able to have someone who is giving us the model to go by. But unlike the Pharisees that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 23 and verse 3, he said, so do and observe whatever they tell you but not the works they do, or they preach and do not practice. What Paul taught, Paul also did. There's nothing better that helps us in our understanding than an appropriate example. 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and purity. In Titus 2 and verse 7, it says, Show yourself in all respects to be a good, to be a model of good works, and in your teaching, show integrity and dignity. Just as it was vital for them to receive the information from Paul, it is also vital for us to be able to take it all in. And we must accept and abide in those teachings. Jesus warned us in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Being taught right is not enough. 
we also need the right training. Why in verse 9 of Philippians 4, Paul says to practice these things. It means to make it a habit. Now I'm sure that the Maddoxes did not become excellent drag racing in drag racing by sitting there and looking at their car. They practiced those things. They learned from those things. Every time they go down the track, there's a learning curve. We process what we're doing. And it leads to more accomplishments. If we're practicing the words Paul says in verse 8, as we continue to practice and think on those things and dwell on those things, eventually they become natural. What is it that limits our capability? You know, growing up, starting in the third grade, my mom and dad bought me and my brother a couple of instruments. A clarinet, which I got, my brother got the saxophone. His looked a lot cooler than mine did. His was brass, mine was black. And I know that my parents didn't have a lot of money to spend and they bought used instruments and it still cost them a pretty penny. What I didn't realize was what they were going to make me do every night for 45 minutes. That was practice. They didn't like the first week of it because my first clarinet lesson had nothing connected to the clarinet except the mouthpiece. And all we did was blow in it. So for 45 minutes, the first time I had to practice, all I did was blow in that mouthpiece. Trust me, it's not a pleasant sound. But eventually, everything would flow together. Each time, we became better and better. There were less squeaks. There were less sour notes. Practice these things. If we want to excel in sports, we must practice. And if we don't like to practice, we'll never excel. There are many Christians today who are unwilling to develop their skills of Christian living because they do not want to practice. The last part of verse 9, Philippians 4 says, and the God of peace will be with you. This is where we return to the theme of peace. Thinking on these things, acting on these things should bring us peace. In order for us to have access to the peace of God, we must think clearly. Jesus is that personification of the virtues mentioned in verse 8. In John chapter 14 and verse 1, he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. If we are thinking clearly, now is the time to think appropriately. God has put in place his plan of salvation. Hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and baptism, God has placed them all there in a very simple plan. But we can read it. We can read it every day. But if we never act on it, all we're doing is pointing a gun and never pulling the trigger. 
if you are a Christian or not? Are you practicing being a Christian? Or is it just a name? Is it just a group that you socialize with? We can take our minds and go back to the person, the people that we used to be on a regular basis. We go back and we realize there are some things that we really need to change. Now's the time to do it. When we open up our Bibles by ourselves and, and read, when we take the time and offer up prayers, it will aid us in the changes that we need to make help us to be able to focus on the things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and a good report. If there's anyone that needs to respond to the invitation, we want to give you that opportunity now. Together we stand and we sing. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know us said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I do have an announcement. Um, <coughs> time is coming to where uh, some of our children in our Bible classes will be moving up. I'd like to have a very short meeting right after service as you'll come up for our Bible class teachers and those who would like to, to teach. So we can try to get things lined up. Our time when we'll kind of change everything over will be the 21st of August. That'll give any teachers or whatever, if they're moving up or getting another class or starting a class, to have time to get things prepared. So after services, if you have that desire to teach, um, we would really appreciate it. And just come on up front and we'll get this moving right along and we shouldn't take too long there. Uh, if there's nothing further by anybody, if you'll please stand, we'll be dismissed with prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for our that you bless us with this day and this week. We're always thankful for the church and meeting together. We, we, we thank you.
Heavenly Father, we, we praise you and through your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our homes and our families and all the things you've us for each day. We pray that you would help us take the things that we've heard preached today in these lessons and take them into our minds and our hearts and do the best we can and leave better Christian examples for the people around us. Heavenly Father, we we pray for our nation and our leaders. We, we pray for the ones that lead our nation to make decisions which will help us be a better country, more acceptable in your sight. We pray for the uh, ones around us every day, Heavenly Father, the ones who lead our fire departments and so forth, that they be kept safe from harm. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for everything you bless us with this week. We pray that you watch over and care for us, each one, and go with us as we leave this place today. We pray that you in the strong and loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.